Hello, Internet. Welcome to the 13th episode of Tissues of the Day. Thank you for joining us. Today, we're covering a very interesting topic. This show is generally about queer culture and relationship, but today's particular episode is on consent. So this is going to be a serious one, potentially heavier one. So be warned, but be ready to educate yourself. Uh, today, we are joined by our special guest, Gwendolyn Gray. Hello, Gwendolyn. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for joining us. Gwendolyn is currently working as an actress in Vancouver, and you can follow Gwendolyn on Instagram at Gwendolyn IV, as in the Roman numerals. Uh, we are also joined by my wonderful, spectacular, non-video on Zoom friend, David Bora. David. <laughs> They can't see what I'm doing, but I'm naked right now. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the second that camera went off, you just took everything. I was like, oh, God, this yeah. room is so warm. Time to let, let my beans free. Don't take that out your, of context. Your beans. I have never heard that term be used for male balls. <laughs> Your beans. <laughs> or what kind of beans? So are we talking red kidney, black bean, pinto? Uh, garbanzo. <laughs> Ooh, they're meaty. <laughs> well, that's a little revealing piece about uh, David. But what we want to learn more about is Gwendolyn. Mm -hmm. Gwendolyn. The first thing we do, segment one, rapid fire questions. <clears throat> okay. What we do here is ask you a bunch of questions and we'd like you to answer them as quickly as possible. Go with your gut, don't judge yourself, just answer uh, so that we can learn a little bit more about you and then use that to extrapolate. Does okay, that make well, sense? Okay, well I hope my therapist isn't gonna watch this. So let's go. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, this, well, you know what? This, this is a form of therapy being on this show. So there you go. Uh, you ready, David? Yes, sir. I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, all right. So we'll ping pong back and forth. Uh, I'll kick it off. First and foremost, Gwendolyn, cats or dogs? Dogs. <laughs> if you could do over any part of the day, which would it be? The morning and I'd get out of bed on time. <laughs> mm. Nights in or nights out? Nights in. Mm. Are you a listener or a talker? A talker. Your middle name? I don't have one. Ooh. Ooh. Do you prefer the country or the city? The city. Drama or comedy? Drama. Mm. Books or films? Books. Which is weird. Because number, I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> number one pet peeve. People who walk in the middle of the sidewalk. Mm. <laughs> when is the last time you felt flattered or complimented? This is where I'm <laughs> There yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, In one word. Oh, sorry, you didn't answer. Whoop. Yeah, no, I don't. Being asked to come on this show. Oh. No. Of course, we're always there for you. In one word, describe your aesthetic. Black. Mm. Um, what do you hope to get out of this podcast? Uh, a new perspective. Oh. A recent addiction of yours. Caffeine. Mm. Do you have a crush at the moment, real life or a celebrity? Yes. <laughs> In yeah. bed, more time uptown or downtown? Downtown. Ah. <laughs> um, what would we most likely find in your saved porn folder? <laughs> <laughs> Anything involving an erotic <laughs> massage, okay? Ah, massage stuff. Yes. All right, we'll cut it off there. That's good. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so based off this, David, what would you say, how yeah. would you interpolate Gwendolyn? Ooh, um, oh, God. Uh, so because Gwendolyn and I haven't hung out very much, um, I would say it, it would appear... It would appear that like you you want you want to be set free in some ways. It feels like you're you're maybe in a, in a bit of a box, and you're you're hoping to break out of that box at some point in the future. Wow, mm. I feel like you'd be right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, okay, that's very very interesting. Very good. Um, I would. It's interesting. So I'm learning. I'm getting to know Gwendolyn wonderfully over uh, the last I'd say couple months. Um, but I knew her prior to then. And the thing that I get out of this, honestly, the thing is classic. The word that comes up is like classical. You know, like when I think like 
black and like uh even just <laughs> use like massage you know like <laughs> s- like classic sensuality uh being into books and things like that so that's that's the term i get is like classic beauty oh nice mm-hmm. thank you awesome okay so section number two uh transition bot give us a ch- <laughs> give us a transition <laughs> I totally forgot <laughs> to have this oh my loaded. God, you don't remember? I told myself, so I, I've, <laughs> this is a horrible transition, but I've told myself, so Robert tends to like give me really big asks in like our improv and I want to mm-hmm. be a better improviser. So I want to like have stuff at the ready. Um, and I just forgot to like prep myself for this one. So, okay. So our transition is a. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. This. So many of his like sound effects are so video game inspired, you yeah. know? Like, <laughs> it's amazing. I feel All like right. I just leveled up. Right. Well, you did. You really did. When you're with David, you level up. <laughs> oh. uh, there we go. We're going into the next segment of our show, which is all about thematic discussion questions about the topic of consent. So I'm going to kick off the first one uh, and I will put it to Gwendolyn to start. Why has society struggled to respect consent from your perspective? And I should say that all the opinions we're putting out today are, are from our own perspective and our own life experience. There's so many different versions of this, but that's what we can bring because that's what we know. And we particularly wanted to bring on a female identifying person today because uh, this topic is particularly true of uh, female identifying people, um, but men have to deal with it too. So there we go. Gwendolyn, why has society struggled? <sighs> okay, yeah, I kind of like David with your wanting to have things at the ready. I originally was like going to do research and like prep a whole thing, notes for myself to refer to. But then I was like, you know what? No, I'm just going to speak from the heart. Um, so, I mean... It's very much, I think, a historical issue. Like, this is, I mean, obviously nothing under the sun is new. This isn't necessarily an issue that's just come up. Like, in our lifetimes, it's, I think, uh, just people are being more vocal about it now because of, who knows, things like social media, etc. But if you think back to, you know, the concept of, like, a father giving his daughter away at the wedding like she's going from being um his property to now the property of her husband um so that's a very i think that's a very telling tradition that i mean no one really thinks about now it's just kind of what you know it's a cute thing to have your dad walk you down the aisle at your wedding um but where it comes from is the bride is uh, essentially this is a transfer of property like your and um so it's so it's so ingrained in our culture that in such a way that it happens all the time all around us and we don't really even notice anymore because it's just how things are like you know, your dad walks you down the wedding at your or walks you down the aisle at your wedding, and um, <laughs> the wedding at your aisle. <laughs> yeah, the wedding at your aisle. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. I got. I'm glad I got that out of the way like yeah. early on in the show because I'm going to stumble <laughs> over my words a lot, and um, you know, like things are. Sometimes it's so hard to separate why something is is happening from all these little tiny instances that we don't even notice. And I feel like I'm rambling now. So maybe I should have prepared something, but like, does that make sense? Like historically, it's just, it's so ingrained in our psyche that. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I, I I completely agree. I, I would, I would say like, I think history is a big thing you hit on. Uh, Another piece that came to mind while you're discussing that, I think um, 
I wish I could remember the specific instance and maybe David, you can, I think I sent it to you actually, but another piece that comes to mind is, um, the idea that the person who maybe isn't providing consent, who is breaking the barriers of consent, um, is in the moment being faced with making a wrong decision and they don't like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's an issue too. So it's almost like the flip side of like, there's that history and sort of that whole like power struggle. But I think also the idea of that, that it's sort of like when you're told not to do something or like you've kind of broken, breaking a barrier or something. I think it's like that moment of holding a mirror up to yourself. And I use this reference in terms of there was this, um, stream gamer streamer female identifying person who called out like one of the like the people who were chatting during her stream who said something along the lines of like hey tell me what underwear you're wearing and she just like snapped at him and she's like why would you care about that why would you ask me that that's not cool and then his response was oh i was just kidding Mm -hmm. and to like hide behind humor she just went on this beautiful tirade where she basically like and not like cruelly but just very succinctly aptly and in a controlled manner said uh you are hiding behind humor because you don't like the fact that i just put a mirror up to you and showed you that you did something ugly and that's why you reacted and he started getting aggressive in that so i think there's just those two elements to like consent is that that history and that power struggle Mm -hmm. combined with also the person who might have struggled with the consent being faced with doing something wrong yeah. Yes, I think I've seen the the stream you're referring to. Actually, it was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. David, what's your thoughts? Um, yeah, that was the first thought that came to my mind. Was I think it's always been about power, and it will continue to be about power. And like, it's unfortunate and like good in a weird way that um, women are taking back power, marginalized people are taking back power, and weirdly there like is so much power in like saying no and like denying people the like access <laughs> to your body or like to your time or whatever um and it's just this idea like it sounded like what Gwen was hitting on or Gwendolyn was hitting on was this idea of women being treated as property being treated as mm-hmm. objects and you know within all of this power stuff like we're talking about patriarchy we're talking about racism we're talking about misogyny like all of these things that people have done historically to take away the rights of other people and assume that they don't have value they don't have feelings they don't have desires of their own um and so i think that struggle is so like it's so weird because it's like i i do really like the point that robert was making about when someone gives you a no, it then puts you in a position of being rejected. And I think mm-hmm. possibly, you know, I'm not going to super generalize, but possibly a major fear of like people forcing themselves on somebody else is a deep insecurity that they are unlovable, that they will be rejected if they ever asked. So they don't yeah. ask and they become a criminal and they hurt tons of people, if not just a couple people. Um, and that's really yeah. like mm-hmm. sad as well because it means that patriarchy and these power systems hurt everybody. It's not just like the women and the people who are subjugated. It's the people at the top who have this feeling of defensiveness and entitlement and like feelings that they should be better than they really are, um, which continues to breed insecurity and feelings of acting out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's yeah, really good point. Um, and I'd love to hear uh, from Gwen the point of like, so we've identified this sort of progressive nature of um, power being rebalanced, right? A lot of this is about power, power taking power, giving power, and all that. And historically, has been given a lot to the old male identifying people of the world. Where do you see that balance has struck now in the more modern day? Do you think it's more balanced? Do you think it's still unbalanced? Where are we at? I think. I mean, I think it's it's not achieved perfect balance yet, um, but I do I do see you know, a lot of positive change, a lot of positive change, and um, just more um, more people being willing to step up and use their voice when they see 
or hear something that is perhaps not okay and just being more willing to put themselves out there in support of other people I see that happening a lot both like online in an online in a digital space and also out in the real world um which is so heartening because I feel like it's so easy to have you know even one bad experience and I mean we've all had more than one and just sort of take that on and think you know well this is it you know everything everything is awful and all my interactions are going to be colored and you know tainted by this interaction but it's I think that if you really look hard it's it is changing and it is things are getting more positive and especially um I I see w- women coming to the aid of other women a lot mm, more vocally which is nice because it's so e- and I've been on both sides of this it's so easy to be afraid to say anything and just sort of look away or pretend you didn't see or pretend you didn't hear and that is the easier thing to do um uh, but really not and it's not just you know women supporting women is a very important thing because there's a lot of internalized misogyny that makes it easy to talk other women down to make ourselves feel better and perhaps <laughs> this is outside the scope of this episode but um also just in a sense of just people supporting other people you know wherever you are on the gender spectrum aside just human beings being willing to step up and support other human beings i think is happening a lot digitally yeah. and in the real world and i love to see it it gives me so yeah. much hope <laughs> that's good you know something yeah. that gives me some hope on this um i do like and some of it has been kind of i don't know taken into the corporate world and used for marketing purposes unfortunately i think of companies like gillette but i have been heartened by seeing that um especially on the male end of the spectrum, um, campaigns, discussions, groups, TED Talks and things about like men being vulnerable to other men. And I think that's going to help a lot of that power balance because men need to know that they can talk about these things. They can cry. They can uh, hear no and that's all right. That they can ask and they don't need to take you know, like just opening up men and pulling them away from the historical misogyny and patriarchy that has been the thing that built us up into a lot of the problematic scenarios we face today um, to see some change in that, I think is really good. Um, what's your thoughts, David? Um, yeah, I agree with all of that. Also, I think I almost start every phrase or throw to me by saying, um, and I'm working on it just cause I don't know, it's, you know, it's podcast, it's radio. I, I, I am giving myself a note live, but the uh, book I'm reading right now is called Conflict is Not Abuse by Sarah Shulman. And it's really fascinating because it talks about this idea of victimhood versus abuser and what we can do about approaching conflict as, you know, being able to talk about how we are conflicted as opposed to immediately falling into these roles of victim and abuser because the major problem with victim and abuser is because society in some ways has overcorrected to being like well victims should always be trusted and victims need all of the repercussions they can get and whatever they want as far as punishment or um reparation or whatever like they have the right to ask that um and like demand that from their abuser or like things happen to their abuser and it just becomes really difficult because then it's about punishment it's not about changing behavior or growth or like healing or any of that stuff it just becomes like you put up whatever you put up your iron fence you put up your giant wall and you say this was absolutely unacceptable and i don't want to see this person ever again i don't want to hear from them ever again and that's like true emotionally um but what this book talks about is how if we really want to progress as a society we have to find the times where it's okay to um really look at ourselves and like look at 
abusers and see the humanity there and see like, you know, what is the way forward that doesn't involve this person just dying in a jail cell or like, you know, having their life completely ruined. Um, it's really complicated because like, like I said, the emotional reality is being abused or being a survivor or whatever is extremely painful and like often results in more damage to the survivor's life than it does to the uh, abuser's life. So it's a fascinating book. I recommend it to anyone who's curious about this topic. Amazing. Speaking of personal experiences, I want to take us into our next question around, do we here in our group have any personal experiences with consent? Um, and keep in mind that the topic and consent can go into a lot of categories that are outside of just like sexually based things. Um, yeah. Gwen, do you have any personal experiences and feel free to be as in depth or not about this? Uh, I feel okay. So I am very lucky in terms of just the trajectory of my life and the, the things that have happened to me. I'm very lucky. Uh, but someone asked me the other day, she was having a, she was on the phone with her husband and he was talking about some, something that had happened in the office or whatever. And she, she asked me, she was like, hold on a second. And she asked me, she was like, how many women do you know who have been sexually anything? And immediately I was like, 100% of the women I know have been sexually harassed in some way. 100%. And I know, you know, mm -hmm. consent is not about always about sex, but that just like, I had never thought about it before. Um, but for me, I mean, in terms of consent, I had someone, I was waiting for my sky train and some person got off the train, walked by me and just like grabbed me and oh. then kept walking. And I was in, a public space crowded full of people. There were probably 50 other people standing, mm. standing next to me. And this person just had the, I almost just want to say confidence to just feel able to do go that. ahead and do that in a public place and, and get off scot-free. Cause Cause I just was so shocked. I didn't say anything. Cause what, what do I even say? He's like gone up the escalator now. Um, and so many people saw, nobody said anything. That's a tough one, especially because like the, there's a, there's a concept or a theory around the bystander effect around yeah. like how you don't do anything because you think somebody else is going to do something. And so it becomes a domino effect where nobody does anything because they all think the other is going to do something. Um, wow. Sorry, first and foremost, that that occurred to you and you went through that. Um, my personal experience, uh, I'm going to take more from the side that I think is more, I think, because a consent for me where I'm being not allowing consent, it obviously happens to me less, but I think I'm trying to, th the one I'm thinking of is in regards to learning how to provide consent to somebody else in a different context that I've been trying to do more of is that as a man and my personality type, I'm a fixer for the most part. And I always, I'm always generally want to fix things. And I have found that in providing emotional support to people, it's actually been really helpful. And this was taught to me by a friend of mine, a uh, female identifying friend was to get consent on how, how you can provide su support. So if I have a friend coming to me for something that's going wrong, I'm trying to get into more of a habit by saying, um, do you want me to just listen or do you want me to give you advice? And just that simple like opening line and then obviously the rest of the conversation happens pretty naturally but i've found that it's been really good because sometimes it really does depend upon the person some people come and they're just like i just need to unload or i need to be heard and other people are like i actually need guidance and so i've really liked learning that practice of consent of asking people like how do you need help um and then i think in terms of like more sexual exploration being a gay man i'm dealing with other men and so there's just a lot of nobody wants to give consent or like nobody's like it's just like what's well, a problem for men um wait what does that so mean can you unpack that a little bit i don't understand 
Well, just like the idea of like, you know, men generally are the takers. So like if you have two two men, you know, it's like the topic I don't think comes up as much. Um, and so in the space of exploring sexuality and kink in that, um, that's where I've been learning about it and been trying to either ask for consent or give consent. Uh, it's where I found I've explored it mostly. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 It's just that's that's my space where I've been learning it is that I'm like, there's certain things you want to explore and you need to get that OK up front. What about you, David? Well, uh, I do have a story of kind of like that bystander effect that we were talking about. And then I am going to talk about my experience with sexual harassment. It was a pretty like impactful one. Um, so I'll just tell two stories. Is that OK? Yes. <laughs> OK, cool. Yeah, um, of course. So. Uh, the first story is on a bus, so much drama on, sorry, not a bus, on a Skytrain. And there was a straight couple, man and a woman. The woman was sitting down and the guy was like standing up next to her, sort of like holding the, um, whatever, the support pole thing and just talking to her. And the, it's still like, it still makes me so mad to think about it. The guy was like doing stuff like this to the lady, like holding her like on the neck and like, just like touching her face and she was obviously uncomfortable. She kept like pushing mm. his hand away and like just being like, like this. Um, and the way they were talking was like very quiet, very, wow. It like really gets me worked up. Um, mm. They, uh, the girl, you know, was obviously trying to like tell him to like back off. And the dude, I don't know, seemed like he was pleading with her or something. They were so quiet. I couldn't understand what they were saying. And like after, you know, like two or three minutes or whatever, I was like, how is nobody doing anything? It was a busy SkyTrain. And so I, I walk up to the two of them and I pretty much just addressed the guy. I did not really expect to get that much out of the girl because that's such like a horrible situation for her to be in. And so I was like, dude, listen, how many times does she need to push your hand away for you to realize like that's not okay? And I don't necessarily care like what you do with your life, but when you do this on a SkyTrain, this becomes everybody's problem. So if you don't stop, I'm going to ask you to get on a different bus or a different track or whatever. And the dude was just like, oh, no, 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 it's 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 okay. Like immediately became defensive. And the girl, mm. like it's so heartbreaking. The girl like looked up at me with like, one of the saddest looks I've seen. It was just like, it's fine, uh, like kind of thing. And I was just like, oh my God. So the dude is just like really backpedaling, really defensive. And I'm like, I'm I'm serious, man. Like if you don't stop, like this is gonna be an issue. I'm gonna go stand over there now. And so I go to like stand farther away and it seemed like they stopped or whatever. And the guy's stop came up like, I don't know, like two stops or something later. And he tried to talk to me as if like, hey man, I hope that wasn't like i I'm like, whatever dude, just go. <laughs> it was so like, uh, yeah, your heart must have been racing. So exhausting. Yeah, I was like, and no one else said anything. Was the craziest part was just like a couple people like maybe looked over, like gave the side eye, but like, yeah, it just, it was wild. That bystander effect is real because like the pressure in me of like, am I being a problem right now? Was still coming up, and it was like mm -hmm. obviously not. Like this is so bad. Um, so yeah, so so that's that one story. Um, my second story is, I don't even know if this will be that long, but um, basically I was in an organization and in that organization, there was a director at the time. Uh, he was the director for two years. Um, it was like a theater thing. And um, we were on a bit of a, a vacation stay at like uh, somebody's cabin and there was a lake uh, so we were swimming at the lake and having a good time and then i noticed as i was getting out of the lake onto a deck that this guy had a camera that he was sort of holding like to his side so he was like facing away from me but the camera was behind him sort of at his hip um pointed behind him like in my direction as if he were like you know filming discreetly and i was like did I just see that? Like, I almost immediately like gaslit myself of just like, no, like what? Like he just has a camera at his side. He can't be using it for anything. <laughs> um, so I pretty much just let it go. 
and was just like, that was weird. And I brought it up to friends maybe a couple months later, like two or three months later. Um, I was like, yeah, there was just this weird thing that this dude, I, I might have imagined it, I really don't know, um, of holding a camera next to me. And then this other friend showed me on his phone that he was accidentally sent a picture of me like in my bathing suit, face uh, cropped out, legs cropped out, um, like just my torso uh, swimming or like, you know, relaxing in the water. And I was like, this is like a very like erotic photo. Like, why did he send it? And he like showed me the chat, this other friend, and was just like, yeah, I don't know. He seemed to send it by accident and then randomly and then just sounded really embarrassed and was like, this is totally mortifying. Like, could you delete that or whatever? And my other friend was like, wow. Um, Okay, and so the friend didn't delete it, which sidebar, um, don't share people's nudes if they're ever sent to you. Like, just don't do that. That is my rule. Because you never, you just never know. Like, you just lose control of the image as soon as you send it. Um, So in, yeah. yeah, so in this case, it ended up, you know, like working out in a weird way because this friend who I talked to, I'm like, that's me. That's 100% me. And uh, I don't know what to do about this. And so it was a year probably that I just sort of like kept this to myself. And I was like, well, uh, he's like a director for this show. I don't want to like make waves. Um, But I was holding on to this resentment of like, this guy's a fucking dork. Like what a weirdo. I don't want to talk to him. I don't like this guy. Um, And by the way, like anybody who does this kind of stuff is a dork. And it's okay. You can like you can get better in your life, but like if you're doing stuff without people's consent, you're just a big old dork. Um, <laughs> <Great> dork. <laughs> Capital so, D dork. So uh, what ended up happening was this: just resentment was like really building up in me, and I was like, I I have to do something. And I confronted the guy uh, over text, and I was like, Listen, I know you took photos of me. I have seen the photo. I got a copy of it myself and um, and I came at him really aggressively. I was like, listen, if uh, like, please respond within a week. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, approach like the board of directors and we're going to look at um, having you leave this position or something. So what was especially weird about um, how I approached that was like, you know, he was obviously like, ah, shit, like really upset about it. Um, But then. Uh, a week passed. I don't remember what he said after that. Um, but I then talked to the board of directors and I was like, listen, can like, what are we going to do about this? And one of the directors told me like, well, the way you approached this guy made it sound like blackmail and it made it sound like, um, you know, like what is really going on here? Like what ideally do you want out of this situation, David? And I was like, God damn it. Like, do I really have to explain why I reacted the way I reacted? But okay, I apologize for that seeming like blackmail, but this is a really big deal. I feel like I was sexually harassed. Um, A photo was taken without my consent. And like, this is criminal in certain places. Like taking a sexually suggestive photo of someone is an offense. But like, you know, I'm really about not being vindictive and like trying to like find the best path forward. So... (laughs) We had a meeting in person. We like signed a bit of a contract basically saying like this uh, offender had to take a break from any position of power. Well, had to finish his term as a director. He was not released immediately. So it was handled really softly. I think he got off quite lucky um, in the sense that there are plenty of people who would just be asked to leave and asked to never come back to the company. And that would be it. So... Yeah, so that happened, and then he had to take a break from any leadership position for a year. Um, And to this day, you know, I still feel weird whenever I hear his name, if I see a picture of him, if I see him out in real life, because, I don't know, I just may not ever really get over that, and that's not a friendship I need in my life, um, or like a, a, what do you call it, a partnership, a co-worker thing that I need in my life, but it was so... Um, just violating and especially the like power dynamics at play. Like this was a strictly volunteer organization, but still like when you have a director, you know, being creepy toward the people that 
uh, essentially work for him, that's like awful. That's grade A problematic, grade A dork. Um, so I don't really have too much to say about that other than <sighs> as far as like the vindictiveness or like seeing the humanity or whatever is like, I know his behavior came from a really dark place, and so I don't necessarily hold that against him, but I 100% have the right to never speak to him again and not need to, like, give him anything else that I already haven't given him. I feel like I've, I was very gracious in terms of staying within this organization and, like, trying to make it work and just, like, having a couple guidelines around, you know, I don't want to see this person, I don't want to perform with this person, let's just leave it at that, and... Mm -hmm. That was it. Thank you for coming to my story. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, thank you for sharing that and for opening up about that, being vulnerable yeah. about that, both yeah. to David and to Gwen about your experiences and what you went through. Um, one thing, I think actually it was you, David, who told me this, and I think it's very apt in this moment, is that the reason you feel multiple things about this, right, that you have um, both the sort of, what I'm hearing as the pain and the hurt and the betrayal and the um, assault of the actions, yet you also feel um, empathy, or maybe not empathy, but um, yeah, yeah, empathy. I do feel empathy, empathy. and concern and um, sadness for where the actions, the source of the actions, why it happened and where it comes from goes to show emotional maturity. You know, emotional maturity is defined by being able to feel multiple things about any particular event in life and recognize that that's okay. You know, that you, there's more than one thing. And I always, I thought that was a very enlightening moment to me because I think this is a good example of it. This is like the actions are inexcusable and wrong and people should own up to them. But we also have to temper it with knowing that sometimes it comes from a place of somebody is hurt. They've maybe even hurt themselves. You know, another key phrase I love is hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Right. So there is a cycle there. And so, yeah, I think that's just extremely insightful. And I, I want to bring all this back a little bit. What I'm hearing is to back beyond sort of the modern actions and our own experiences to history. And I blame God damn testosterone. Sure. If you really yeah. go back, it is that freaking chemical. I think it's a chemical that like is present primarily in male people with a lot of testosterone who have that testosterone have this innate inflated sense of aggression and possession and acquisition and and just that's what testosterone does it's good for us in some ways it makes us confident in other ways it makes us dicks and so yeah. i think that's what then led into this history culturally socially you know personally around like why men and testosterone heavy people um, and that being of being testosterone driven, um, has created for some people who've made really bad decisions in life. That's it's so interesting. You bring up testosterone because, um, okay, I will, I am obviously, I'm not a physician, but my understanding is, um, you know, there's the stereotype of when a woman is menstruating, she's emotionally unstable and, you know, she can't lead a country cause she might be on her period and launch some nukes. My, Back in the day, it was hysteria. <laughs> yeah. My understanding is that at that particular point in her cycle, because like we all have um, estrogen and testosterone and like men have estrogen as well as testosterone. It's just, you know, at that point in a woman's cycle, she has more testosterone than usual. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and it makes emotional regulation for some people very difficult <laughs> hmm Crazy. Very difficult. that's there news go. to me wow Tes <laughs> testosterone again comes <laughs> to ruin again. the day <laughs> wow okay well i want us to take to our last piece instead of another discussion question we just wanted to present some resources for people out there who are struggling with sexual assault issues of consent uh, and there are resources out there because this is a habit topic to bring today but I'm glad we were vulnerable and we opened up and we educated and there's more out there for you so maybe David can do some effects like making stuff appear beside my head oh, as yeah. I list these off yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, sheltersafe.ca is a map of shelters for women who feel they have nowhere to go hopeforwellness.ca is an anonymous online counseling open 24 7 can be also phoned at 1-855-242 
3310, endingviolencecanada.org, a comprehensive list of sexual assault centers, crises lines, and support services at the national and provincial level. And those are just a few, but there's more out there and we want people to know about it. Uh, I'm going to transition us into mm. a little bit more of the lighter <laughs> element of our show because we always want to have a little bit of fun and a little joy even oh, with yeah. the realness that is our world i need it i need to like come down yeah. a little bit Let's do <laughs> raise it. my blood pressure people ready <laughs> people ready do they have do they have their bits do they have their things um what we're doing is called a game called audio cue for those out there who do not know where we have collected a set of various audio cues, audio files, sounds, and we don't know what they are, but we're going to share them with our guests here on the show, and they have to guess it and figure out what it is. And the way it plays out is that um, the person sharing will let person A guess and then person B and go back and forth until we determine a winner. Maybe there is no winner because it's just too bloody hard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But um, who wants to go first? Uh, I can go first. So here it comes. Did you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I should have asked, do I have to raise my hand and be polite or can I just shout it out uh, if I know the answer? You can no, shout it out. We're totally, we're, you, but we're giving it to Gwen first and then yeah, if yeah. you don't get it, I'll try. <laughs> well, isn't that um, Mario jumping and hitting the yeah. little thing? <laughs> so iconic. So iconic. <laughs> You know, I just figured yeah. that just just a nice softball because I started with a really hard one last time we played this game. Um, who yeah. wants to play a sound next? Uh, mine's like in a sequence, so I'll go last. Okay. okay. I'm anticipating. Excuse me while we open up Groove Media Player. Uh, Hell yeah. Okay, I'll one do more it again. Time. Oh, I have a guess. Okay. Is it a go. goose hissing? Oh my goodness, no. Oh. But I can see why. <laughs> play it again, play it again. Geese, geese are the worst. Okay, I am gonna go with slurping a coffee. Oh my gosh, yes, it's it's the foam off a latte. Yes! I actually specifically thought it was the top part. Wow. Yeah. Well nice. done. Nice. Okay, Very David well again. I'll go last. Um, okay, let me see. I was really hoping for the subsequent sound of your first one, David, to be the like, <laughs> which is like when they like get bigger because they ate a mushroom. Right? Gosh, uh, I'm looking for, uh, I don't have a great second one. Um, That's fine. Yeah, can you come back to me if Gwen has a second one? Okay. I do, Gwen. I have a second okay, one. Round okay. two, Gwen. Round two. <laughs> Okay. And sorry, you can also hear my dog in the background. That's like the bonus sound. Nice. <laughs> oh, bonus sound. <laughs> Gunner in the background whining. I hid his favorite toy because it made noise. Oh. Ooh. I have a guess. Okay, is go. it? Is it a? It's an animal. Camel. No. Damn it. Buffalo? No. Is it an uh, orangutan? No. Okay, I think they're adorable when they're small. When they're small. They start when, small. When they're small. <laughs> but also, apparently, they're like super angry and murderous and killers. Oh, hippos. Hippos! Nice. Okay, nice. <laughs> My next guess was going to be pig. Um, They're very yeah. aggressive. I was going to yeah. go pig too, but I was like, it's not a pig. It's like pig-like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a hippo. pig on steroids. <laughs> right? Okay, I have okay, my, David. my second one. Do it, do it, do it. Any guesses? Gwen, first. Is it? Is it a bicycle? No. Yes. Like drum. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is it a bicycle yes. chain? Yeah, you got I it. Because I a drum too. <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah. What's the drum? I'm not sure actually. I think it's just maybe the pedal moving. Maybe it clicks oh. as it goes around in a circle. 
God. Did you have a guess, Robert? What did you think Sorry, it was? Robert. I was well, I was gonna go with like a tin drum or mm. metal drum of some kind, but then I also heard the like that other sound and I was just like, I don't know yeah. what that thing is. Yeah. Um because <laughs> I, I, I thought it was a crank. Like it was like right. something like you were lifting something up, but maybe I was like, maybe it lifts a drum. I don't know. <laughs> My turn. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm sure it will be um, nice and easy. <laughs> okay. So here it is. Another one of these. <laughs> Come on. That's the particular portion I want you to listen to. This? Okay, so that one that was just happening. Okay, okay, so the clicking one, my guess is somebody tapping on an eggshell. Ooh, no, Gwen. Um, is it, it sounds like some sort of like scary deep sea creature. Uh, no, That's very no, creative. Me, I like that. Answer ignore a lot. this portion. Okay. It's it's there's something prior, but it's th this right here. It's coming in. Hold on. This. Okay. Uh, my next guess is it somebody just tapping on a phone screen? Correct. Yes. Oh. It is a phone screen being tapped on with nails. With yes. those acrylics. Yeah, there's my guess was of... gonna be a hamster nibbling on something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nope. a subgenre. I've actually seen a TikTok of this amazing person um who wore long nails. They might have been real nails, and they like made a song out of all the sound effects they could make just by like tapping their phone with their nails. <laughs> it was very <laughs> cool. cool. All right, I'm gonna have one last one. Okay. This, you know, so there's this, of course, but then next. Any ideas? Beats me. Do you have a guess, Gwendolyn? No, I uh, don't. It's, it's, is it something food related? Uh, it is not food, no. Oh. It is a solid thing though, if that makes sense. Can you play one more time? Yeah. Now it's going into the next one. Oh gosh, a solid thing that makes that noise. Mm -hmm. I really have no idea. My first guess was a cereal bag. Oh. Is it an old uh, fashioned coffee grinder? It is not. I'll play it once more. Sorry, this, the scrubber is very finite on this. So I mm -hmm. had to get to, into the previous. Here it is. Pouring something out of a bag? No. Uh, you're getting into the right kind of material. Woof. I don't know. Oh my god, I'm so stumped. Um, I got nothing. Is it somebody standing on ice that's decompressing? <laughs> or compressing? Uh, no, but that is a good guess. Damn. I am going to give it away. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get it. It is somebody running their fingers through one of those, like, plastic, like, face scrubbers. And it's the little, like, plasticky tines. Uh, oh. Wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Can you play it one more time? That's insane. I, wow, I never would have guessed. It does no. have kind of like a latexy sound, like when you yeah. stretch latex yeah. and it does the. It's <laughs> like if you put your ear up closer to, you know, like those little like rubber. It's like a like an amoeba or something. You know, has all those like, uh -huh. like blooper <laughs> things. Except, things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. but it's plastic. There you go. Wowza. All right. So that brings us to our close. Mm. Um, that brings us to the end of our show. Gwendolyn, do you have anything you would take away from this today? <sighs> yeah, that bystander effect situation. I'm really going to, next time I see something, actually, I'm going to take a page out of David's book and speak up and support my fellow humans. Amazing. And David? Well, 
you know, there's a lot of discussion. We're recording this on, oh gosh, on April 17th. So um, these tend to get posted quite a bit later. But right now there's a lot of stuff in the news about police brutality again. There's a lot of stuff about, um, you know, Asian rights, people of color rights, all of those things. And uh, really what I want to talk about is like my takeaway that I'm also gathering from this book, Conflict is Not Abuse, is like the police are not there to help us or make society better necessarily. Um, So really, really, I hope we can do some research as to like what are the best ways to de-escalate conflict and not ruin people's lives Um, because the police do not have the training. They do not have the time. Um, and it's just not always the best option. And that's really complicated because like Gwendolyn was just saying, you know, we don't always want to take matters into our own hands because we also don't have the skills, but there are people out there. There are social workers, mental health workers, crisis counselors, all of these people who are underutilized and undersupported by our government that need more funding. So, you know, if we can reduce the usage of police as like, arbiters of what should happen in people's like intimate relationships or like like we were talking about in a previous episode someone um didn't disclose their status and that makes them a horrible dirty person so arrest them kind of thing like that's just Mm. not the way to a healthier society so yeah that's my takeaway is fuck the police (laughs) (laughs) amazing um there's a song about that uh my piece would be this is that there is still so much more education that needs to occur for myself and other individuals. And I think the point around having a mirror put up to yourself, like the female streamer who highlighted this to an inappropriate individual, we need to be willing to do more. We need to look at ourselves every now and then and be willing to apologize, recognize when something went wrong, because it doesn't mean the end of the world, we can recover from it. So. We just have to be willing to put that mirror on ourselves every now and then in life and, and correct our stance for the future. Boom. So thank you again, Gwendolyn, for coming on. Uh, if anyone out there would like to follow Gwendolyn, it's at Gwendolyn IV. That is the Roman numerals at Instagram. Thank you so much for having me on and thinking of me and letting me approach this minefield of a topic with you too (laughs) (laughs) of course we're always there to blow shit up Mm -hmm. Um, thank you for listening to tissues of the day you can follow david at bitbutton on twitter and instagram and you can follow myself who has been hosting today at robert f mckay on instagram that's robert f mckay so go out there and stay wet internet consensually (laughs) 